This part of the test will measure your speaking ability. It will last around 20 to 30 minutes. You will answer four questions. The first question will be about a familiar topic. The other three will be about short conversations, lectures, and reading passages. You can read and hear the lectures and paragraphs only once. You will see the time available for preparing the responses as well as the time to give your response on the bottom side of the screen. You have to stay within those time limits. Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. Some people enjoy spending their holidays on the beach, while others go to the mountains and the nature parks. Which do you prefer and why? Include examples and details in your explanation. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. I personally prefer going to the beach. Now the reason why is, well, it's a personal preference. I simply love the beach more. I mean, I like the mountains as well, but the beach is more important to me. I simply love going to the beach, looking at the sea. I like looking at the sunset. I find that you can do more when you go to the beach. In the mountains, yes, you have the walks and all of that, but when you're at the beach, you can uh, play a lot of sports, you can hang around with different people. It's all around good fun. Speaking task two. You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. What do you think about the decision to eliminate sugar from the cafeteria? I absolutely don't like it. I think that it is a really bad decision. How so? Well, number one, we are not children. We should be able to make our own decision when it comes to the food we will eat. It is true that the country has a problem with obesity, but limiting our choices is not a good way to fix it. I guess you are right. I am a sugar addict, and if they implement this ban, I will simply go outside of campus in order to get my fix. I know that the same will happen with the other students. We will simply stock up sweets in our dorms, and I think that will cause us to eat even more. And what about studying? Do you think it will do any good there? I don't think it will. Actually, I strongly disagree with their assumption that our performance will be better. We need a reward after we study hard. I always treat myself to chocolate after I am done with a study session. I think you eat too much sugar. With or without this ban, you should try to eat less of it.
the female student expresses her opinion about the change in the student cafeteria, state her opinion and the reasons why she has it. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. The female student gave a couple of reasons why she disagreed with this decision. Number one, she thinks it's not good that the university will decide instead of them. Number two, she says that it will simply not be effective because the students will go somewhere else to, you know, satisfy their cravings for sugar. She said personally that she would go out, that she and the other students would basically go out and uh, go outside of the campus and that, that they and that they would buy a lot of sweets and they would create a large stock of sweets that they could use later. And the last thing she said that basically uh, this would not help with uh, studying because uh, she personally feels that she needs a reward after studying hard and sweets usually they are that reward. Speaking task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. So now we're going to talk about two types of venture capital. One of them is called early stage financing and the other one is expansion financing. To give one example of early stage financing, let's talk about a company that is creating equipment for skiing, let's say. Now they have the idea of how that equipment is going to be, what it's going to be what it's going to be used for. They have enough capital to open a store for said equipment, but they don't have enough money to create a finished product, a prototype, let's call it like that. So they will go to venture capitalists, to institutions or individuals who can give them money in order to develop this product uh, further or in order to complete it. So this is basically capital for those uh, companies or startups that haven't fully developed their capabilities or their products and they need that capital to to basically finish that development. Now when it comes to expansion financing, this is when a company is fully developed and they just want to expand their capabilities. Here let's talk about Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg and his partners, they developed the website, how it's going to be, what users could do on it, but they needed more money in order to go global. So they sought out capital in order to increase their capabilities of their server, in order to market their idea, 
in order to market their website and this is something that helped Facebook in order to become a, a world brand, a world name. Using the examples from the lecture, explain the two types of venture capital. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. We were given two examples of venture capital. One is early stage financing, where we have a company that is just starting out. Maybe they want to develop something new. They want to create something new. And we were given an example of a company or a shop that wants to create ski equipment, ski equipment, ski equipment that they want to sell and uh, they were trying to find financing so they could do just that to create the equipment and sell it and then we had expansion financing where we got the example of facebook a company which is already fully developed their idea was already finished and they just wanted to go bigger they wanted to go global and that's why they needed the money from uh, from the investors in order to expand on their idea not necessarily they were not necessarily starting out but they simply wanted that what they created to become bigger you will listen to a lecture about an academic topic after you will get a question about what you heard you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it Now listen to the lecture. Today we are going to talk about the foot in the door technique. Now what this technique involves is making an initial smaller request before making a larger request. For example, let's say that you want your boss to give you a raise. That day you wouldn't come immediately with asking something big like that. You wouldn't say, please, I would like my salary to be higher. But maybe you will come on Monday and you will say, you know what, boss, I think that it would be really beneficial for me if you would acquire this new software. Now, it's not something too expensive. It's quite cheap and it will allow me and my co-workers to do a better job, a faster job while using less energy, while it being less difficult for us. Now, since this is something small, your boss will grant your request. And then you will come tomorrow on Tuesday and you will ask for a raise. And your employer, your boss, will be more receptive to this request because he or she granted something smaller the day before. Another example of this is if you are running part of a charity organization. You might ask for smaller donations in the beginning or for the person or for the other people participating in the charity to do something small in the beginning, some small action. And then with time, you would ask them to contribute more and more or to do more and more. So you can see by starting with something smaller, you will be able to get something more, something bigger. Some researchers think that, that when you ask for smaller requests, you're kind of tying the giver, the donor, the, the person from whom you're asking a favor, that you're tying this person to you to be more benevolent to you in the future. Because if they did something good in the beginning, they will be more inclined to do something even more. Using the points and examples from the lecture, explain the foot in the door technique. Prepare your response after the beep.
Start speaking after the beep. The foot in the door technique is a technique where you ask for something small initially so that you can ask for something bigger later on and that bigger thing uh, will be granted to you. Uh, we uh, got an example of an employee that might want to ask the, the boss to, to get a raise. Now instead of in immediately asking for the raise it's better to ask for something small like a software which would which will be less expensive and then later to ask for the raise and uh, the likelihood of that raise uh, being given will be uh, higher. Another simple example is the example of a charity where you first ask maybe for something really small to get the person to engage with the charity and then later on you can ask for a bigger commitment whether it's in action or a monetary commitment.